a new approach to robot design inspired by origami. I'm Tanya Hall, and joining me is Professor Jamie Peck, Director of the Reconfigurable Robotics Lab at EPFL. Welcome, Dr. Peck. Good morning, or good afternoon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, what does the Reconfigurable Robotics Lab do? Our lab specializes in developing, designing, prototyping uh, non-conventional robots. They may not look like robots in the first glance, but they would have all the characteristics that you would expect from a robot. That means it will be doing functional work under a command with a feedback loop control. What are the strengths and weaknesses of traditional robot design? So classically, um, well, I'm classically trained mechanical engineer, and it's not been that long that robotics were considered as a part of uh, academic uh, route or uh, academic uh, 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 a domain to study, because usually we do robotics based off of mechanical engineering or computer science or electrical engineering. This was the integration of different domains of studies. And recently, we know that you know, robotics is considered as a, a field of uh, research because we know we can no longer just depend on one singular um, domain of research. So that being said, classically, robots were designed and built based on their specific task. You optimize your design and hardware based on the very simple or very exact task you want the robot to execute. That means you had optimized task, optimized form, optimized uh, uh, route or task base that were destined to do one task and one task really, really well. The, so that, was, that worked out perfectly fine, but now we want robots to do more. We are no longer so satisfied with robots just doing one thing good. Um, so in our lab, Reconfigure Robotics Lab, what we try to address is having the robots understand the changing environments and the random tasks. So instead of having robot just not being able to do anything when you want it to do something else, we want the robot to change its form, reconfigure its body to address new environment, as well as change its task space so that it can still carry on a task and hopefully have the mission uh, accomplished. What inspired you to use origami as a concept to overcome a weakness of the traditional robot design? So origami is a really, really versatile platform. Well, personally, I am not an origami artist, but when you go to these exhibitions of origamis, you understand that from a single piece of paper, you're able to fold different shapes and forms that, that, that can actually transform itself. So you, from a single piece of paper, you can build a, a paper crane, paper boat, paper airplane, but all coming from a single, uh, single base. So we thought, it would it be possible to actually build multiple forms of robots based on a simple platform? Not necessarily flat, but a simple platform. And what we realized was this is mathematically already proven that you can create any three-dimensional shape from a two-dimensional uh, sub, uh, substrate. And this is amazing. We sort of suspected, you know, we have a lot of versatility using origami, but we did not, it was, it was uh, mathematical proof that you can actually fold a uh, two-dimensional uh, surface so to create 3D objects. So we got the cue from there and we thought, is it possible? And then we can see this from uh, computer graphics. When you look at a different computer graphics, you go through meshing, and meshing is based on triangular or multiple polygon forms. And by making this polygon so small enough, you can create uh, very realistic physical models in, in a graphical space. Imagine that transferring into actual uh, uh, hardware. Imagine having a polygon that changes its shape or uh, assembling a different way to create uh, 3D objects. And instead for us, it being just an object, these are robots that's creating this polygon shapes and transforming between the distances, angles, and um, orientation between them. 
So that's where the origami robot started, trying to create different polygon um, connections between the two-dimensional object into a 3D. Tell us about Robogami. How did you start, obviously, from this premise, and how far have you progressed? Good question. Um, so initially, well, about 10 years ago, my origami robots, so robotic origami, robogamis, um, were only able to create, uh, it was a very much of a demonstra demonstrative prototype. So from a flat sheet of a robot, quasi, two, quasi 2D, because it measured still, there's a thickness. It's about, uh, it was a two millimeter or uh, under the two millimeter thickness. It was able to create from the same platform, uh, a pinwheel and uh, a hexagonal, uh, a table shape or uh, airplane to a boat. So those ones are just a demonstrative visual uh, 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 prototypes that show the potential of having a single platform transform into two different shapes. Now, the most recent work that we have shown shows that it can actually change its functionality, meaning from a single platform, we're able to create three different types of locomotive modes. Meaning, if you put a robot on a single, uh, on a normal environment, you would only have a single or two locomotive modes. Either um, it flies or it walks, depending on the kind of drone you're using, but that's the state of art. The latest Robogami is able to create three different types of locomotive modes, meaning it can roll, crawl, and if it meets an obstacle, you'll be able to hop over it. And this is a really great demonstration that with a simple robotic structure, we are still able to address different types of terrain types, and it is able to react to it. So that's one thing that it can already do, changing its locomotion types. Not only that, these robots can communicate with each other. So think about a colony of ants. Individual ants are light and not that strong, but in masses, they can do a lot more. They can build bridges, go over bridges, tear down and make roads for the other the rest of the troop to pass by. And our origami robots is, are able to do that right now. They can communicate with each other, push objects that's way too heavy for a single uh, robot, but they can communicate to push and collaborate to, um, to push a single object uh, together. So these are the, some of the robots, uh, some of the functionality we are already showing with our origamis. Talk about their autonomous operation. Where does the AI reside and <laughs> what, what kind of problem can it solve? So currently we don't use any AI on our Robogamis, but what we can say is that we have created a, a platform of a robot that is very cheap and that can collaborate. And that means we are able to quote unquote mass produce robots very cheaply. Um, so this is a platform you can test out different AI algorithms and different types of AI uh, 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 objectives onto our robot because it's not very common to have a cheap robot that can communicate with the, each other and still do uh, a carry out a functional task. So we think we, that's actually what we want to uh, explore ourselves a bit, but they're looking for collaborators who would be interested in using uh, an a intelligent platform that can take an AI uh, to, to test out different cases of AI uh, objectives. So you can test out different swarm um, uh, tasks, or you can test out different collaborative tasks or social behaviors on, directly on our robot platform. What sort of technical challenges did you have to address in, to make uh, Robogamis? Good question. So the, we say it's reconfigure robots. So you should be able to take any form when upon the new challenges or new uh, changing environment. But the underlying design challenge is that we want these robots to be nominally flat. And flat robot is not that easy to build. Um, the major, the, the major reason is, uh, I think there's five different components to any robot that you must have, five different hardware components. One is actuator. Actuators are the motors that are controllable, sensors, microcontrollers, power supply, and sensors. These are the five essential uh, components that you must have on any robot so that it can be autonomous. 
power supply, let's say we can use uh, the latest lithium batteries or solar panels or different types. So, so say that can be flat. Sensors, you can make them as small as you want, depending on the task you want. Cameras are still thickish and it's a little bit bulky, but it is still possible to put some level of sensors, infrared sensors or different type of tactile sensors. But the biggest problem for us or for any roboticist who's trying to make an unconventionally shaped robot is the actuators. Actuators are the, really the motor to run the, uh, run the, uh, run the uh, robots. Small, and then they're usually, their sizes and their capacity, mechanical capacity, are proportional to their uh, size. So bigger the motor, big, uh, stronger and faster they're going to be. Smaller motor, less things it can do. So try to make a, uh, your robots nominally flat. Having bigger motor sort of goes out the window. So what we are trying to do is not only explore the currently available electromechanical motors, but also developing our own actuators in the lab. And in order to do that, we are looking at different smart materials as well as combining and making integrated motors with uh, existing solutions as well. Why is outer space such a great application for Robogamis? Ah, great question. Um, so, well, I said earlier on that classical robots and the existing robots are really designed to do one thing and one thing really well. So usually the module robots or reconfigure robots or robots that are customizable sort of gets a bad name because, you know, when you cannot, uh, when the, there are robots that exist to do one thing really good, these robots are not really meant to do one thing really good, but they're optimized to do multitasking. So it's a different focus of designing robots. But there is a place where reconfigurability becomes a core, uh, core uh, uh, critical um, uh, question, uh, critical, um, having a, a multitasking ability being a critical uh, uh, point. And that's the outer space where you don't have that many options to send as many robots as you want. On the earth, you can buy as many robots as you want, I guess, if you want to do multiple tasks. But in the space, everything you send over there, it costs a lot of money. That's why you cannot, it, you have to be really careful how much of the stuff that you send over. So if you're not quite sure what kind of environment you're gonna be running into, and if you're not quite sure what kind of task you want your robot to do, it's very difficult to choose what kind of robot you wanna send over there. So I think having a reconfigurability in a robot and having a platform like origami robot in the space would play a very great role because you'll be able to do automation in the task that is going to be super repetitive because you're not going to have uh, interns in the space. So you, the, the astronauts have to carry out all the tedious tasks themselves. Having the origami would be a platform they can use to reconfigure into the tasks they want to be executed uh, without, uh, that can be a helping hand with that they would not have otherwise. How does Robogami simulate or transmit touch? Um, so the, one of the examples I can show, or the one of the biggest advantages of Origami platform or Robogami platform is that we are able to transform existing mechanical systems into a folding mechanisms. So that's, that's a lot to take in. So imagine a traditional or classical uh, uh, linkages. Either they're uh, ball socket joints or hinges or slider cranks, um, five bar mechanisms. So those are the, the minimum or that's the, 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 the basic core of mechanical structure where you have a kinematic linkage between the joints. That means it doesn't matter how small you can make you can, your individual components, your size of your final robotic platform depends on how small you can make your joints. And your joints are just as strong or the proportionally strong as your size of your linkages. Smaller linkages or the larger linkages, your structure is going to be stronger. And that's why it sort of restricts how small or compact you can make your structure to be. Higher degrees of freedom you have in your robot, you will have more agility and controllability. But that means that you're gonna have more linkages. And the more the linkages you have, 
your structure is going to be weaker and there's going to be more error. There's going to be uh, difficulty making the whole system more accurate with a higher resolution. An origami platform allows us to change those multiple linkages and different degrees of freedom into folding linkages. Folding linkages, by definition, you can make them completely flat. And by transforming this, we're able to create very complex kinematics into a simpler structure. The making of it is not simple, but the kinematics become simpler and manufacturing of it becomes simpler while keeping the high accuracy of overall system. And using that, so that was a very long answer or that was very long uh, foreshadowing, but that allows us to recreate a haptic device in a very, very compact form. And that allows us to have uh, the latest prototype. Uh, gives you a three-dimensional force feedback underneath your fingertip. Haptic device is not something new. Uh, robotic surgeries are done through haptic device where you can feel what robot is feeling underneath your fingertip. But these are usually reserved for large uh, devices that takes up about um, uh, uh, 30 centimeters by 30 centimeter footprint on, on, the, on your desktop. So it's a large space and normally there is not much of a problem when you're in a fixed environment. But imagine having this ability to feel what robot is feeling in a portable fashion. And that's what we were able to do with Origami Platform. This gives you a th still three degrees of freedom underneath your fingertips, but in a portable sense. And this is only possible because we're able to change traditional linkages, mechanical linkages, into a folding linkages that goes directly under, uh, that falls underneath your fingertips. What are some of the use cases that this could be applied for touch simulation, especially portable? Um, so why is the portability that important? First of all, I think it's a democratization of technology. Um, having larger mechanisms that you normally use for um, uh, medical uh, usages means it's very, very expensive. And we, even though technology exists, Haptic devices, haptic feedback is not an everyday uh, a word like as AI is because we don't know or in general public does not know what it feels like to feel what a robot is feeling or uh, feel what a digital world can give you. Um, the latest haptic device I guess everyone is aware of is a little vibration in your cell phone, but that's about all the sensation we get from uh, uh, electromagnetic actuators. So having this um, uh, Robogami platform that's very cheap to make compared to traditional robots, we can democratize this type of technology. And what can it use for? Well, I guess it's going to be like uh, Apple Store apps. You can produce as many uh, applications you can possibly want. If I were to just give some example, is that since you're able to feel the stiffness and the force in the different directions with using this haptic device, You'll be able to feel the difference between the stiffness of the different objects that you're seeing on screen. For example, if you're pointing your cursor, oh, and then on top of that, you can use it as a moving mouse as well, three-dimensional mouse as well. So you'll be able to not only move your mouse on screen in X, Y, but Z direction as well. And as you're moving in Z direction, you will be able to feel how thick, thin, um, hard, soft the objects or the, the images are. So you'll be able to touch the screen and feel the profile of your face. You're able to touch the screen, quote unquote, touch the screen and feel the rightness of a, a, a fruit that you want to buy online or feel the texture of the clothing that you're trying to buy online and also feel different uh, surfaces that are either realistic or completely out of whack. And that is all under the control of the web designer. Professor Jamie Peck, director of the Reconfigurable Robotics Lab at EPFL. If somebody wants to connect with you, maybe they want to find out more about your work or participate, how can they do that? They can go directly to our lab website, um, RRL, which is a short form for Reconfigurable Robotics Lab, rrl.epfl.ch. Sounds great. Thanks again for joining us. And if you guys want to find more of my interviews, you can do that right here or go to tanyahall.net.
Thanks for watching. Thanks.